this is Edward Collis for Art Collector. And uh, I've got the great privilege of having a conversation with Dale Frank about his current exhibition that's on at Ross and Oxy 9 Gallery in Sydney. Um, how do you do, Dale? Nice to see you. Nice to see you and speak to you again. Yeah. Um, Dale, I, uh, I've been having a look at, at the, um, the images online of mm. this show. And congratulations. It, it looks like an astonishing um, uh, output. Uh, when I look at these images, and I might just pull a couple of them up, uh, I think. Let me uh, go to uh, my shared screen here and uh, pull them up. So, um, just um, going through some of these now. You know, when I look at these images, I see these almost immeasurable flowing veils and um, seeping acid fogs, like a kind of psychedelic miasma. Um, there's rivers and blots of blood and ink, blast waves, like the rippling through interplanetary space. Sometimes they feel like that. There's uh, day glow explosions of spermatic filaments and gosh, and uh, amoeboid like uh, uh, substances that are seeping and swirling. It, it, it looks like at times like I'm looking into a Petri dish and other times I'm looking through a microscope or a telescope into deep space. Um, at times, even like a, a cloud chamber, you know, that's recording the debris of, say, high energy particle collisions. Interesting. Let me just uh, come back to you now. Mm. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is that these works are all huge. They're all about two meters square. And it's quite, uh, it must be quite a challenge thinking about works of that scale being seen on a, say, a computer screen or even on an iPhone. Um, it's nothing, it, I didn't think about that. So. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, uh, galleries of, you know, we've always been emailing images anyway. So it's, um, uh, it's having, seeing images that size is a, uh, uh, a normal way of viewing these days. I mean, even before the virus, yeah, it was, uh, uh, you know, it's back in the, before the internet, there was a time when you used to just view images on slides. So um, it's no different. But, you know, I, I, I know from your previous in, in exhibitions, you approach these shows almost like installations. You know, they're, they're immersive, enveloping environments and mm. they're events to walk into. How did you feel about um, this completely new way of actually showing work? Where, where there's no one in the gallery, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, you can't think about that. Um, You've still got it. I still approach the exhibition as if um, everyone would see it in the space. Um, I couldn't look at it as, oh, we'll just do it online or something. I couldn't approach it that way. Um, I don't know how anyone could approach it that way. If they were, they'd be doing sort of computer work. Um, yeah. uh, it's. And your work is is at the antithesis of of computer work and the screen. Uh, there was a there was a, an Instagram documentary, a little short piece that uh, Oxy Nine put out. I think I saw it on Instagram of you at work in the studio. Yes. And the the um, experience of well the 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 watching you um, work on these canvases or on these boards of perspex or whatever the material might be. Um, it's like watching a chemist at work, you know, in a, in a laboratory. <laughs> it's, it's phenomenal. Like the, the, I mean, there's so much action of 
pouring, and, and, dragging, and, but there's so much chemistry in it as well. There's, um, it may seem uh, haphazard and chaotic, but that's only because I, over the years, know what will happen in, with certain powders, certain chemicals at certain times and certain rates, and you have to be, um, it's quite a uh, mentally laborious job. It's um, thinking about it all as you're doing it. Sorry, that was my timer going. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I want to just actually uh, make a, a qualification of that remark you've said before. I don't think it does look haphazard at all. Uh, uh, no. Watching you on the documentary, there is such precision in the way that you're pouring and observing how these different flows interact and how these great uh, glutinous clouds, you know, like travel across each other and interpenetrate. In fact, I'd say there's, you know, for all of this psychedelic punch and, and, and what some may say a kind of vulgarity about the colour, which I love. I think, really think that that sense of brashness is terrific. It's like, it's like the old punk days, you know, that are still, and grunge days that are still going. But yes, yes. it's so elegant as well. And it is such, there's, there's such a, a sense of, um, of, Considered, everything has to be. Yes, considered. the colorism, the you know, the, the the spread and the smear and the drag of the squeegee and all of that. Yeah, no, it's. Um, do you plan these things in advance, or do you go in and just look at them? Uh, um, as I, I, you just have to start somewhere. I don't plan ahead. I I start somewhere. I have maybe in my mind that I'd be using uh, more metallics in a certain work. Um, and one action uh, leads me to uh, see that there are probably four alternatives and I choose one. And that leads to maybe six alternatives and I choose two of those to keep going. And uh, the work comes to a conclusion when um, the timer goes off, basically, um, when it's um, set because these uh, powders with resins um, on the, most of the paintings in this show, uh, I've got um, 20 minutes at most before it's rock hard. So, so, the, so each of these works at the most took 20 minutes? Before they became rock hard, yes. Mm. Um, that was the... Uh, urgency of it. I can come back uh, over them and do more uh, in an hour or so when they've, when they've cooled down because they, they go to um, an incredibly high temperature um, when you're doing them. And then you come back in an hour, you can add more, but they, it won't uh, meld or bleed with the ones with the layer underneath. So you have, it's like you have to, if you come back over it, you have to put almost transparent colours over it to get different effects. Oh. Um, yeah, then, then, the, then the whole thing is um, epoxy glassed um, a few days later to seal it all. I mean, the, you mentioned the word effects then, and I, I think I'd have to say the last thing I'd, describe you as an, is an effects artist, that's to say. Yes, yeah. well, I, that's, that's the wrong word. I was like, it, it's more process than... Yeah, than I understand it, and I'm not actually quizzing you on that. I, I was just gonna say, um, to me, what there, there seems to be an objective behind each of these works, uh, like the creation of something. I mean, they almost look like worlds uh, of their own. Uh, maybe suspended in some kind of fluid, uh, whether it's a, a liquid or a gas, I, I, I'm not sure, but it seems to be a world, you know, like, like a gas giant world, right? Like Jupiter. Yeah, like, yeah, no, that's, that's what I like. So, yeah, it's... Um, um, but is, isn't all, all painting like a suspended world that um, you're detached from? Um, well, good painting is, yes. <laughs> 
Okay. I, I, um, pennies are good. Uh, so, um, to tell me, uh, I mean, th this work, it, it has to be produced fast. Technically, it has to be produced very with, fast. With the, with, the, with the powder and the resins, uh, yes. So there is a, uh, uh, I think you used the word urgency to it. And yes. The surprising thing about the work is that they seem almost serene. Uh, they seem almost timeless, except for these sort of flows and spatters and so on. But that has, has the experience of the last three or four months, you know, had, has that had any effect on the way you're working? Um, um, by that, I mean, of course, the, the virus, yeah? Yeah. Um, well, I've, I've been following it since mid-December. Um, and... Um, I was sending emails late at night telling people how many were going to die here and things like that. So I'm, I'm actually at the moment a little bit relieved, but um, for some months um, really thought that being a ex heavy smoker, that I was in a high risk category. So I, you know, contacted a solicitor and started a will and all of this sort of stuff. Um, but what, uh, uh, apart from all of that, I've just managed to do a lot more work, that's all. Um, that, that was the most important thing, doing more work. Hmm. Tell me, I'm going to have to ask you this question because I know your titles have always been a bit whack and they've always been lovely. Um, could you give us a little hint about what... Uh, some of these titles might uh, refer to. They're quite oh, extraordinary. It's, it's things that I've heard and seen in the last few months, that's all. Um, they're uh, uh, another window to a reality that um, has happened in the last few months. So I, I don't know what to say about them really. Mm. It seems to be a kind of narrative to them, uh, but it is, they are kind of disjointed and they're like kind of wild thoughts that are wild mm. to yeah. Uh, yeah, they're all of that and more. So, um, uh, I like it. The titles in each show, I like them to be um, not isolated, but read with each other so that when you're actually going through the, the ex walking, I was going to say walking around the exhibition, when you're looking at the images and you read one title after another, it um, creates a, a, another level to the exhibition, to the installation. It certainly does that. Um, I feel like I'm on uh, two uh, seismic plates that are kind of like mm. to go over and uh, it makes for a very exciting show. I really would like to congratulate you on that. Show Thank you. Dale, and it's been great to have a chat with you. It's been good to chat to you. I hope we can do it again in the future. So yeah. uh, we'll say goodbye now. And uh, please, everyone, check out the show at uh, Rosanoxy online uh, of Dale Frank's latest work. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Thank you, Dale. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.